On today's episode of Wrong Side, the United States has turned into an episode of The Boys. Some news out of soccer, men's national team, USA men's basketball gearing up for the Olympics. And oh yeah, a former president got shot over the weekend. Also, Brendan Walter joins us in studio for a great interview talking about the music industry, college hockey, and the path to get there. And we wrap it up with our usual outside outside the line segment featuring tone deaf person of the week and wrong side, right side in a world full of champions. We find ourselves on the wrong side. Welcome back, Wrong Siders. Happy Wrong Side Wednesday, and thank you for joining us again here live on Wednesday, July 17th. We got a great episode coming up for you guys today. Beautiful interview with Brendan Walter. We're back in studio with the rebrand, Full Effect, the website, Full Effect, TikTok firing, Reels going out. Joey, what has been one thing that you've been liking to see so far on the website and everything going on with us? Dude, I'm I'm loving it so far. Shout out to Moose, who's who's been pioneering the way as far as designing our graphics, pushing stuff out on social media. I just love getting the boys together, working towards a common goal, that pack mentality we have going on. The website looks great. Social media is firing. And honestly, I can't be happier with the rebrand. Today, uh, it's Sunday the 14th. As we're recording this, we are at 199 followers on our Instagram. Who's going to be that lucky 200th follower? I'm looking forward to it. As I said in the interview, we're, out, we're quickly on our way to a million dollars and a million followers. So I'm I'm pumped about the rebrand so far. Yeah, been going well. I think everything's been firing on all cylinders. I love that we get to see the blogs, people with different stories, different comments. People are more engaged on our socials. I feel like we're going to talk about it later in the interview as well. But Joey and I admit to having athlete brain, which you guys will learn what that is, and not really focusing on the socials, but it's been going well, and that's been going well on that side. And now we're firing and ready to go, and I couldn't be happier so far that we're working to that common goal. But that's been going on for the wrong side rebrand. Uh, what else? What else happened this week? Anything? Anything big? Uh, oh yeah, probably a, a big headline news for for all Americans. U.S. men's soccer. Oh yes, that was for, that was that Americans was the number one headline this week. Yes, I did see that. Yeah, number one headline this week: Burr Halter out. Get that criminal out of here. Fire him straight into the sun, as we expected uh, last week. Um, he got he got let go. They are now on their way. Uh, worldwide coaching search. Going to bring in the best of the best. Klopp, who is, I believe, the Liverpool manager. He, he was. He was he the was. Liverpool yes, manager correct. recently. He has officially declined the job. I know that was everyone's kind of fantasy and dream hire there. So um, going out again to, to the ends of the earth to bring in the next best option. Maybe Burhalter's back for a no, third time. That no, would be very can't under, happen. Undertaker of him can't to pop happen. back up. But yeah, I mean... We, we kind of expected this big news out of that camp over there, but nothing that we really didn't see coming. So that, that was kind of the big news of the that, week. That was it? probably headlining all of us news. I would say, I, I would think, right. Yeah, right? I, anything else? I mean, there, there was some stuff going on in Pennsylvania over the weekend. Oh, did you hear about that? Oh, I did see. Yes. Uh, was it a, Oh, right. That's right. Former president, Donald J. Trump shot. Shot at, not killed, but shot at assassination attempt at one of his rallies. Obviously, we have to talk about it a little. We're not going to dive too deep into the politics, yeah. pick all that kind of information out. But what a story. What a moment in history. Um, we have a new John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald, and Thomas uh, Morris. What was his name? Thomas Moore? I don't even know. They were doing like two names, but I think it's like Thomas, Thomas Matthew Crooks is his name. Thomas Matthew Crooks. Thomas so, Matthew Crooks. What a fucking story to headline Saturday. Um, definitely got in the way, I guess, a little of the Burhalter news. Probably shun, shunned him out of the yeah. USA spotlight, but what a moment in time. What a moment in time. I just, so I was at, I was with my parents. I was at my cousin's house having dinner when it happened. And it's just like. I mean, I see all my news on Twitter, really. So you kind of got to verify your sources of where things are right. coming from. But first of all, great day for the internet. The memes have been flying. But but first and foremost, the overall message that we want to say is 
don't shoot at people. I think I think it's fair to say that that's what we want our message to be, and that assassination is wrong, no matter if you're red, blue, black, white, yellow, purple, whatever. The what I was surprised and and disappointed to kind of see was the way that the media especially handled it. I said in our on today's episode section that we're living in a plot of the boys because it's just like it, it's asinine headlines coming out from both sides. Like I, I didn't know that you needed to have an opinion when there was a, a murder attempt on somebody's life, but I guess you do in this day and age. So regardless of politics and everything, like I, I, I think you're in agreement on this. Like it's pretty fucking crazy that a former president got a shot at his head, eight shots at his head, no less. Yeah. It, it was truly insane. I mean, it, that was one, I mean, I, I saw a tweet that was making fun. I know the because bullets are measured in millimeter, but everyone was like, we were one millimeter away from losing President Trump. And someone was like, in America, it's called an inch. Like someone was making fun. But uh, <laughs> it's seriously true. We are one inch, one millimeter away from it being a national day in history. It, it could have been Abraham Lincoln. It yeah. could have been JFK. It would have been down that same path. And it was so insane. And I... Don't know what happened with Secret Service and why they didn't like do a sweep of the outside surrounding buildings. Um, but I will say, like you said, it's it's very bad someone was shot out. If you don't agree with his policies or the ethics of him, 100% I agree. We are not dumb at the idea sure. that he is the all humane Jesus Christ or he's this big, big name person that he's all holy, never done anything wrong. He's He's had a lot of bad issues. Trump has had his moments. But mm -hmm. I'm willing to say that Getting shot at it should be something that shouldn't divide the country and be like, this can't happen. In this country, we shouldn't do that. And you're absolutely right. It is a plot of the boys. I was expecting Homelander to like come out from the sky, save him. But truly it's interesting to see that. And the the limited amount of compassion I felt people felt. Yeah. And I get it. This is another situation where people wanted to talk about gun safety, but there wasn't one second of compassion. It was, oh, now can we talk about compassion? And the... People that were just upset. I mean, I felt like a lot of people were upset he didn't die, which I feel like is, yeah. is insane too. And like, just kind of goes back to how we talk about like art of debate, talking about things. Like, I think I, I say it a lot when people talk about politics and the way I view politics that in 2008, when it was McCain versus Barack, I know I was really little, but I've seen the video many times now. Yeah. There's a video of a woman at one of John, uh, John McCain's rallies. And he's, she's like, I don't want Barack Obama to be my president. I don't want an Arab person to be my leader. I don't. I think he's not trustworthy. And John McCain shuts it down immediately. He says, no, no, no. He's not a bad person. He's born in the United States. He's a good human. He's a great father. Me and him just disagree on a few policies. And you see yeah. the like civility and the compassion between candidates. Now – there's none of that. I know we have like Joe Biden's Twitter account tweeting it out, Barack tweeting out, yes, you have that, but there's no civility between representatives now. There's no compassion. And that's like what I think America needs. Obviously, people know there's a gun issue problem. Obviously, people know that things are wrong with both parties. If you can't admit there's things wrong with both mm -hmm. parties, you're an idiot. You're an idiot if you can't realize You're that. an idiot, yeah. But <laughs> to say that you wish someone was shot it is so mind boggling to me. And Fucking, I'm not using them for this later in the episode, but I'll use it now. Fucking tone deaf to people that think it was staged when other people lost their lives yeah. and other wrong things happened. Just miserable. And it was such a sad situation. More people could have been injured. A lot of things, people people lost a father. The guy I saw who died lost, it was a father of a family. They lost their dad. And it was awful. Everything about it was bad. There's not one positive thing about it. Um, I know his t-shirt's yeah. going to sell millions, probably that one of him yelling, but just awful top to bottom my, my basic statement on it. Yeah. Agreed. It completely ridiculous. I, I joked about it. That it's a plot of the boys. If you haven't tuned into the boys on Amazon right. prime, it does a really good job of, of showing just the all out corruption on like both sides, po political parties, morals, like everyone's bad. Like there's not a single person in that show. There's not a single politician superhero that that is even remotely close to good and i like sadly feel like that's the state that we're in like you said like you're an idiot if you can't see like the problems going on in the in this country like at, at a system-wide level and like some of the headlines like here's a fact someone took eight shots at donald trump's head this weekend a former president it's not 
Donald Trump cleared the stage due to loud noises. It's not there was a disturbance at the rally. Like there was an attempt on a man's life. There was an attempt on a former president's life. And we'd be saying we'd be sitting here saying the same thing if that happened to Joe Biden. Absolutely. And the fact that absolutely it's it's not like that is it, it's just mind boggling. So like thankfully the man is alive and just everyone get your head out of your ass. Like we, we used to be a proper country and we are just so far away from that now. And it's just heartbreaking. To yeah. See. And I think, I mean, and people are so upset and they hate Trump so much. And, and the worst part about the Trump hate, I think is that there's people that hate Trump and, and for good reason, there's part, there's good reason to hate Trump. He's done some bad things, but the people mm-hmm. that like are, pure into politics and all they want to do is talk politics and they're like i hate donald trump and i hate joe biden but i'm voting for biden and it's because i don't like trump like that's such a shitty way like you're just voting for the other person because and i i get it again you're dumb enough to not realize there's some issues with a two-party system you're dumb if you can't focus on that too but like yeah have compassion learn to love each other again be compassionate. Don't look at all the negatives. I get it. There's a lot of negative in the world and there's a lot of bad in the world. For but sure. to me, if you can't find the compassion to realize that like, yeah, you might like Trump. Guess what? Trump has a family. Trump has kids. They would have lost their dad. Trump's got a wife. Would have lost her husband. There's other things that go apart with just this guy. And I get it. I mean, if this was Bush, Clinton, anybody, it, it would have been a shock throughout the world if any of them were shot at. And I think if you can't realize that- yep. Biden to anybody, Obama, anybody. If you can't notice that any of our past presidents, this would have been an issue. There's something severely wrong with you, in my opinion. Show compassion. Learn how to do it. L- learn ball. Learn political ball. Learn political. Yeah. So yeah. that that's my take on that. Yeah, it, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but completely agreed. I mean, it's just kind of a, a precipice of all, all the problems we've been facing the the last handful of years, and doesn't seem to be a way out anytime soon. But happy election year coming yeah, up! Happy, Here's happy the end July. Of the year. Yeah, we're almost there. But uh, yeah, in, insane moment in history. Uh, shout out to uh, my unnamed daughter or son in 2035, 2040, when they're going to have to write a AP US History DBQ. Shout out to them. It's going to be a sick, yeah. sick DBQ to re- write about. But uh, on the topic mm-hmm. of patriotism and the world we're living in. Uh, we talked men's soccer of the U.S. national team. We talked politics of the U.S. world. And now we're going to talk USA basketball. Olympics coming up. And a little little update on USA basketball. Joey, what, what were your thoughts about the tune-up in Canada? They're playing tomorrow against Serbia and another tune-up. But what, what were your thoughts after game one? First of all, I didn't realize Canada was had as stacked of a roster as they did. The as team. And Jamal They'll Murray be a metal be, team. They'll be a metal team. Could be a goddamn team. problem. Yeah. They beat the U.S. in the bronze medal game back in the last Olympics. Obviously, that was a completely different like U.S. basketball team than we have here today. But Canada could be dangerous from the U.S. perspective. As a as a true wrong sider, I feel most comfortable when I'm able to hate on my teams. When my teams are bad and I get to yell about them, that is that is when I'm at my best. I'd say eight first quarter turnovers. I was ready to call the whole thing off. I'm like, send them all home. Like, get ready for training camp next year. Like, I was like, oh my God, like these guys stink, as was the rest of our group chat going off. And then my hero kind of got the boys settled in and back where they were. Anthony Edwards came off the bench after um, the young guys are more coming off the bench. Uh, a lot of the veterans are starting out there, but he was he was a firecracker. He was explosive. It was the no full really experience. The full experience. You had a turnover, a really bad turnover. You had a crazy three, another yeah. two points. It was the full Ant experience. And Ant was on that bronze team that lost. He was basically the guy. Mm. He was the guy on that team. It was like him, AR, Paolo was on it. So a very younger team in that last FIBA tournament. But Ant yeah. was the guy on that last FIBA team. Yeah. So he, he looked good. Eventually they, they settled in. We got uh, what Twitter has been begging for since this team got announced. The Steph Curry to LeBron lob was beautiful. And I, I was a I was a true American by the end of that game. So it felt good. But I think th- this is probably for for our wrong side, our true wrong siders, potentially the the easiest gimme putt on our way to a championship, I'd say. Should be. I might already be ready to cr- crown them gold. And it's going to be cool to watch all these guys play. So, do you think this is better than the dream team? First quarter turnovers. Yeah, people are saying this team might be better Better than the dream team. team. Not ridiculous. The only way I would debate it is the dream team definitely had more size, which was an advantage for us versus Canada. We out rebounded the hell out of them. That would be my only worry against the actual dream team. But like you, you cannot argue that it's a way more skilled group of guys. Just like how all three pointers, yeah, are are evolving these days. Mm -hmm. So. In a in a seven game series, 
that would be interesting. I think there is a lot of like a lot of strong, obviously a lot of strong players on both teams, but I think it'll in one game, do or die. I, I got to take this team, right? The the current team. Yeah, absolutely. I think my two takeaways were the, yeah, the first quarter was very, very bad. I thought I, I didn't get to really watch the second and third. I went out to softball and missed that part of the game, but I will say I saw, it was very nice to see a lot of love and support for AD felt like a lot of people were like, man, AD's got a really good bag going and he's very, he looks different on the floor. Like a couple years ago, it was kind of nice to see. I think the majority of ball fans are brain rotted that he's a Disney and he's not good. I mean, the guy played the most games in his career in the last like five years this year, he dominated, he was all NBA, had a crazy season, performed very well in every game he played in the playoffs. Um, and it was nice to see that people were kind of accepting him for being a good big and playing his role and doing his thing. He had some great blocks. Obviously, nice having him and a LeBron out there, good connection. And my other takeaway was mm-hmm. it. I don't know how true this quote was. I did see it, though. So uh, if anyone wants to fact check, I might be wrong. But I saw that uh, Steve Kerr, who's the head coach, was talking to Anthony Edwards and told him he's going to be coming off the bench. And Anthony Edwards was like, wow, I don't they kind of had like a disagreement at practice why he was coming off the bench. And I think it was like a, not a serious disagreement, just like a jokingly disagreement. And yeah. Steve Kirk came out and said, he's like, well, you know, Dwayne Wade came off the bench when Kobe was on the team. Dwayne Wade, also mm-hmm. a great player, probably top 35, 40 players in history. Um, and Anthony Edwards responded with, well, there's no Kobe on this team, which was just like, again, yeah. part of the Anthony Edwards experience. And uh, fucking my God. Uh, this is an extra takeaway. My God, is Dylan Brooks annoying? My God. I mean, oh walking, my God. With, walking within the first through, five minutes, it was within insane. the first five minutes walking through the interview when uh, Anthony Edwards and uh, D Book were getting interviewed post game, walked right through. I mean, it was enough already, bro. We know it's your stick. But in Dylan Brooks' defense, I will say, I like that 1,000 times better sticking to the act than like Angel Reese deciding which side she wants to play, villain or no villain. Like That's fair. I, I will say, that's, that's my take. Dylan Brooks is stuck with the act. He is the villain. He plays the role well, doesn't shy away from it. So those are my game one takeaways. It'll be exciting to see the rest of the way. Um, but yeah, anything but gold in this tournament is a disgrace, I think, in my personal opinion. 100%. One more player I want I want your opinion on. Tyrese Halliburton, pass boy. Uh, I, I thought he was... One person, like he was very, like as he does in NBA games, very much like looking for the pass only. I don't consider him super dangerous other than that. I know his three point numbers are pretty solid and the line's even closer in the Olympics than it is in NBA, yeah, I believe. Gonna eat. But <laughs> yeah, I just feel like Halliburton, though, like everyone else is so dynamic offense, defense, inside, outside. I just feel like he's not at that level. I mean, I think they made the Eastern Conference finals or, or were in seven games with the Knicks. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, beat they the Knicks yeah. in seven games. So am I am I hating on him or like I don't know. I, I, think, I don't get I think he's a good I think he's a, I don't I just don't think he's the main guy on the team. He's a bench guy on this team, but he's still yeah. a great player. He facilitates well, he does a lot of things very well, in my personal opinion. But that Pacers team does have a good roster. They built to basically score. Their score, 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 no yeah. defense. But yeah, Halliburton will get in the groove. I don't think he'll play a lot of minutes, probably in the medal the medal round. Um, but in the mm-hmm. exhibition group stage, I think he will have good minutes. I don't like because here's the thing: like a lot of these guys, like LeBron, like he played 18 minutes, 19 minutes. I don't know the last time LeBron ever played that little in a game. So like you know you you yeah. have so many guys that are like so good. They're not and and more importantly, they just finished the season. Um, let me see. Do we have any? We have a couple Celtics on the team, so like it's not. We don't have any Mavs, We're but gonna we, hit on that. Too. We have the Celtics, mm-hmm. but my point being is like we got tired bodies. These guys aren't gonna be playing forty minutes a game. Like it's rotating it in, yeah. rotating out, and like the good thing is they're good enough to do that. And I think Halliburton's gonna play his For role sure. really well, and I think you'll see him shine in the group stage because they maybe are gonna beat up on some teams. But I think Halliburton's great. I don't think he's like the top five starter, but I think he's still worthy of his spot. My opinion on this team. Fair enough. And yeah, you, you mentioned it Celtics with getting Derek white on the team after Kawhi Leonard. Wow. Shocker. Kawhi Leonard hurt again. Yeah, crazy. crazy. Uh, Celtics now have three players on the team. Um, most by, by any NBA team to send to the Olympics team at, at once. Um, Jalen Brown's pissed is, off about is it. The Olympics, but, is the yeah. Olympics is FIBA and the Olympics saving us from a Celtics run of a couple of years. I think they might be. Yes. I actually think I they might so. be. 
I think they might be right side. I'm I'm in on that. The USA basketball might save us from a couple years of Celtics hell because Jalen Brown seems like he wants out. Nike and he hates the Celtics now. Mm-hmm. And Jason Tatum's not commenting. I love it. This is great for a Laker fan. I love the love the drama there. Yeah. So agree. But yeah, it's it, it's truly fascinating. But yeah, gold medal or bust. Uh, we'll be. You're right though. Canada has a very good team. It's going to. They're a very tough team. Um, I think there's a couple entries, but the other tune-ups they have coming up should be cakewalks. Let everybody get their feet under, and uh, please nobody get hurt. Please, please nobody yeah, get hurt. Fingers crossed. So that's my USA basketball yep. takeaway. Yes, sir. That's our week's update. We're going to kick it over to ourselves with Brendan Walter here in studio. That was a great snippet from our week 17 guest. Brendan Walter joins us in studio, country music musician based out of Nashville, currently working his way up, trying to get into the music scene. Over 50,000 Instagram followers, over 100,000 on TikTok, currently grinding his way in Nashville. Brendan, thank you for joining us in the studio. Thank you, boys. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, we are super grateful. For anybody who doesn't know Brendan, uh, he's a friend of one of our main listeners, Anthony Reitenauer, one of our good friends from college, set this interview up. Uh, We're lucky enough to get Brendan very busy, obviously, in Nashville, working hard, writing music. And we're lucky enough to have him in studio for a little interview. So we're very blessed to be able to get him. But Brendan, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, how you got into this scene, and tell the fans what you've been up to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, My name is Brendan. I am from Dallas, Texas, originally. Sick hat. Um, I grew up playing hockey. That was pretty much my main focus throughout my entire life. Uh, played for about 18, 19 years. And then, uh, I graduated school where I played, uh, Lake Forest College in Chicago. Uh, and then I just graduated, uh, moved to Austin right after that to pursue my, um, you know, my dreams of, uh, being a musician, um, and I lived in Austin for the last year, really enjoyed it, kind of cut my teeth there a little bit. I mean, I can't really call a, like one year, like a lot of time, but especially in this industry, but uh, I really learned a lot there and um, just moved in uh, with some really good buddies up in Nashville about a month and a half ago now. And, um, you know, it's just kind of having a year under my belt in the music industry. It's been nice to be able to kind of figure out what you're doing. I think that's a big, big part of it. So, you know, I moved to town. I've been writing uh, almost every day since I've been here. And I will continue to do that for the next couple of months and uh, hopefully get a real kind of project out um, in the fall or winter. So it's kind of the the cliff notes of it. Awesome. So two super competitive fields that you've been in, one being hockey, the other being music. Mm -hmm. So to play college hockey is is one of the highest levels there is when did you realize that that hockey may not be the the final goal for you yeah i mean for sure so i um you know went through the when i was younger and like i think 16 is when i first played triple a maybe 15 or 16 i don't know something like that so i think 16 so i started playing triple a and i was like oh okay all right and then like got to 18s so two years at 18s triple a actually played for the barons for a year in cleveland um, okay. And um, that was my last year of 18s. And then I played in Philadelphia uh, for uh, the G- uh, Little Flyers, which is like a junior team. And then I played in North American League in Odessa after that. <clears throat> and like that, those were all three step up years. So I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Like I can go play D1. And that's what I thought would happen. <laughs> and then I was in Odessa. And my really, I think my only option for like maybe five minutes was army. Um, and I had like 
a sniff at UConn, but there was no chance I was going to UConn. Um, and then when I went D3, I was like, all right, you know, like I'm going to go to school for, you know, a good deal. But like, mm -hmm. it was, it was, uh, it was, it was interesting. I was just like, yeah, this is probably the end. Um, so yeah, I think once I got to, once I got to D three, like, I don't want to like talk bad about it. Like, I mean, I made some of my best friends, um, and you know, still talk to them every day, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say around then I was like, all right, I'm not going to be a superstar. I remember my senior year too, there was like an SP team, which is like one of the lower tier professional leagues where it was like, do you want to come out for, this is my spring semester of senior year. I'm almost out. I'm 26 in college, like almost graduated. And they're like, Hey, do you want to come play playoffs for three months? And I'm like, no, <laughs> like, absolutely not. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. I mean, once I got to college and then obviously COVID and everything else with that, like I was just like, yeah, probably hanging up the skates pretty soon, but you know, I was going to ride it out. Might as well. Yeah. It's, it's a tough ass industry, sports and music. It's uh, tough. And you need a little luck. You need to perform at the right showcase. The right person needs to see you at a bar. Absolutely. You need a little of all of that to things to go that way to get you to the big league or to get you to become famous. And it's very Absolutely. tough making that transition. You know, when you were like, okay, I'm going to be a full-time musician. I'm going to hang up the skates. Mm. How has that been now transitioning and have there been any lessons where you kind of took them from sports and kind of transitioned them to music? I think myself, I'm the first one to admit that I'm a guy who mm. speaks in a lot of sports analogies. If something goes my way, yeah. take the next, get the next pitch ready. There's always another at bat, you know, it, sure. not in life, but in baseball, you can succeed 30% of the time and be great. That's not really the way in life, but kind yeah. of certain ways like that. What have been some ways you've kind of handled that transition and ways you've seen it kind of mesh together in like the middle of a Venn diagram? Yeah, honestly, man, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that I've taken from sports is discipline and like practicing. I mean, at the end of the day, like you have to be the best to succeed, just like sports, just like anything else. And like with this, right, like when I lived in Austin, I wrote, you know, maybe a couple times a week if it was a good week. And now I'm writing like four or five times a week. And it's like, and I'm playing guitar a lot more and I'm trying different instruments out. And, you know, just like, I'm just getting better here, you know? And I think that's really the main focus is like just that work ethic that you can bring from like just countless hours in the gym countless hours on the ice just you know grinding it out i mean dude i'm back on like gallon like i'm like doing a 30 day hard like just no alcohol let's go drinking out of a fucking gallon here like just let's go straight, i just, just did 75 beauty. hard in the spring i just yeah. did that it was miserable at the end yeah. yeah but uh but yeah dude i mean honestly like i i think the work ethic is is the biggest thing that i take away from it i mean I, that taught me so many things. Um, and just like when, like, and not giving up too. like, dude, like, I mean, I know like with hockey, it didn't really work out, but like now I'm just determined. I'm just like, I know hockey didn't work out. I worked my entire life for that to work out. And it didn't, this is not, not going to work out now. You know, like it just has to work, you know? So, um, I think that's a pretty cool thing that came out of it. And it's just different too. I mean, dude, like, you know, being an athlete your whole life and then hanging and like hanging out with like musician groups, it's different, you know, it's a different, you know, dynamic for sure. And not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just like, you know, there's some different walks of life that you run into pretty often. Um, and everyone's nice and, you know, no one's like, you know, it's not a bad thing necessarily, but it's different for sure. And, um, so I think that has been a big growing point for me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'd say that's my answer. I think what you said that that this this thing, this music thing has to work out now. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it when going through the notes that you didn't go from playing college hockey to like, okay, that was my that was my 15 minutes of fame. Like I'm going to graduate with a finance degree and get a desk job. You went to arguably a more difficult walk of life trying to make it in Nashville in in the music industry. Yeah. So 
do you have any kind of tips, tricks, like systems that you do every day to give you that confidence to do that? I think it's just very interesting that you didn't, you didn't go for the safe route after your first dream didn't work out. You found a different dream. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I think there's a little backstory to this. Like, I mean, I started playing guitar in like fifth grade and I played in church and did the whole thing and like was in choir in like high school just so I could play guitar in church. Like that's, you know, and I didn't like drawing. So I was like, might as well do this. I did get snuck into a couple choir things I didn't want to didn't want to fucking do, but you know whatever it yeah. happens. Um, but yeah, dude. I mean, I always knew I wanted to. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. I just knew I wanted to do music at some point. And I think like college, like once you get to college, you have a little bit more time on your hands, and you're just like, oh, okay. And I, like it was always something I was passionate about. Like I always wrote music, kind of, you know, growing mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And um, it was always something I was like, I know I can do this. And I think like, <clears throat> you know, when I, so I, when I like eventually moved to Austin the first time that, that one summer in, in college, I, um, I got that American Idol sniff, you know, for a week or whatever. But uh, I was just like, oh, okay, I can, I can keep doing this. And then, you know, it's just been the serendipity. Like sometimes when you're doing something in life, life just kind of puts the steps in front of you almost. And it's not always hard, easy to find for sure. But like, yeah. I think if you zoom out in the last year, and this is what I have to tell myself all the time. It's just like, there's like something going on here. And it's like in, in a good way, in a really good way. And it's just like all the people I've been meeting, everything that I've been doing, it's just like the steps have been forming, like the serendipity among all of, all of this industry has been really, really cool in the last year. But I mean, like tips, I don't know, man, like do what you want to do. Like, do what you want to do. Like if, like I, I am still interested in doing finance. Like I, you know, it's not like I hate finance. Like, you know, I'm not one of those guys, but like, um, mm -hmm. I was very interested in it and you know, just some guy came and spoke like this is my junior year, like spring semester. He came and spoke his exact job at the exact place I wanted to be. And I was just like, man, I literally called my mom after that. And I'm like, I think I'm going to move to Austin. Like, I don't know if I want to do this. And she's like, fuck. All right. Like, <laughs> I guess <laughs> they're like, you got to figure this shit out, but you know, you, you're good. You can do it. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, like, I'm not saying you got to go jump off a cliff and like, just go do the craziest thing in the world. But like, if you have a passion and you know, you can work at something, go do it, you know, go do it, go open a business. Go. It's like, it's like having a small business, you know, it's like you're on the ground floor for a while. Um, but you know, you get a sniff here and there and it, you know, it kind of just works itself out if, if it's the right thing, you know, for your life. So I don't know. I just, I just think it's been really inspiring just in general to just be, just to know that you can just go do it, you know, like, and a you absolutely, have, you have to put the work in, but you know, you can do it. You can do it. Let me ask you this. You mentioned that conversation with your mom about, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, I think I'm going to move to Austin. And she was like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, good luck with that. And you, yeah. you, know, you got to grind it out. Yeah. Uh, are your parents, uh, the reason I asked this is, are your parents uh, musicians? And do they have musical background? Because, for example, my girlfriend is in med school right now, mm -hmm. but her parents both work in the business world. Yeah. And they were learning as kind of she went along. They didn't really yeah. know many things. And there's parents that kind of were in that spot where I'm in accounting. My dad worked in accounting. He kind of knows what I'm talking about. And there's certain sure. things. And there's a common ground. Did they have a musical background or did you kind of just find that on your own? Yeah, absolutely. Great, qu um, great question. Uh, so... Yeah, I'd say, you know, it's funny. So my mom is, my mom's side of the family, including her, they all have like gorgeous voices. Like they're like, okay. like singers, like operatic kind of stuff. Very, 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 very nice. Uh, my dad and I learned guitar together when I was in fifth grade. Um, so, and he's in like a dad band now, just, you know, killing it. But um, that's awesome. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I'd say definitely like more than hockey dude i was the first one to play hockey i just had like my best friend up the street that his dad you know played a little bit of pro back in the day and he coached us growing up and 
that was I'd say that was more of the learning curve for them was the hockey world. Um, but Interesting. yeah, so my my mom was never like a musician, but you know she she, she definitely like is. Yeah, she's extremely talented, and so is. She knew the world a little. She know how. She knew that kind of stuff. Okay. Exactly. Correct. Correct. Um, But yeah. So yeah. When when we were going and researching you, I at least in my perspective, kind of the precipice of all all of this is when you dropped out of that summer twenty twenty two internship. Is that when you moved down to Austin to to pursue full time? Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of like post that phone call I was mentioning. but yeah, I mean, I, I was just like, my rationale was, okay, I have another year of college. I just want to go try this to see what happens. And I think I like had already been posting. I think I had like maybe 10,000 followers on TikTok. So like I had one video do well or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, anyway, so I was like, okay, if nothing else, I can just go to college next year and just go get the job I was going to have anyway. <clears throat> and anyway, so I moved down there and I uh, just played open mics like every week, like one or mm-hmm. two a week or three sometimes. And then I played on the street like just to do it. And then I posted videos like every day. And um, it was I didn't I don't think I played any shows. Maybe I played one show. I don't even know. But um, yeah, so I was posting videos. I started like kind of getting more followers like kind of not really and then um like american idol reached out just like on instagram and i was just like okay that's cool um and that was like in in june like right when i moved there i was like and then that's what i'm kind of talking about from earlier i was like hmm like i immediately try and i'm not not to say that like it's a one-off thing like it was just kind of like random how like i just moved there and then like this comes right away and I never thought about doing that. I never wanted to do that. But, you know, I did it because I thought it was cool. And I was like, oh, TV show, yeah. whatever. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry. What was the original question? I'm so sorry. Uh, it was Joey's just kind of like how yeah. coming coming into the season. Basically, yeah, like the precipice was really like dropping yeah, that yeah. summer internship to yeah. pursue it. And like that whole process, we kind of hit on it with your mom already. Yeah. But yeah. I just think – it, the the way you're talking about it is kind of what I was trying to get at. Mm-hmm. Your backup plan is like, it was either move down to Austin, pursue music, see what happens there. Obviously, now you are where you are. Right. Or you're like, shit, I guess worst case scenario, I finish college and then go get that desk job I was going to get. Yeah, so it's absolutely really a, a differing in like perspectives and goals. Yeah. Like like we talk about a lot, Michael and I, we really pursued like the, the typical path. Yeah. Go to college, do well in college, yeah. graduate get a job. Here we are. Yeah. Sometimes we love it. Sometimes we hate yeah. it, but sometimes you got to dream a little bigger. Yeah. We're, we're on our way to a million dollars and a million followers. And you were like, man, you were on the, in the same boat and otherwise, yeah, I guess I can work a desk job. Yeah. So I just think like that, as far as people who pursue stuff uh-huh. outside of your more typical nine to five business world, I think that whole thought process, something I didn't think of, like I, I was never musical, but I sure. just, I find it very interesting. Yeah. So that, yeah, that was it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, dude, I like, and that, and again, like, I feel like a lot of, like, a lot of musicians I've heard are like, fuck that. Like, I'm not working a desk job. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, a lot of people, like, didn't go to college either. So, like, that's a, that's a mm-hmm. big factor as well uh, that I feel like a lot of people forget. Um, and, you yeah. know, I'm not trying to throw shade on either side at this point. I'm just kind of letting you know, like, that's just kind of where that comes from. But, like, I'm like, I'm still interested in it. I think it's kind of cool. Um, and it sounds nice having, you know, a couple bucks in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would definitely say that it's different, like you said about them who didn't go to college, have that experience. You have done now both things. You've seen yeah. the side of college. I know, you know it's a little different, the hockey route, because the juniors route, I know you kind of like leak into real college years. So, you know, you said you were graduating 26, 27. That's yeah. not really when someone's in school. So you're a little older, yeah. but you kind of have seen both sides of the spectrum, sure. which I don't think a lot of people can. So it gives you that value yeah. of mm-hmm. seeing both sides and the pros yeah. and cons of each side. And like you said, yeah, it's kind of nice having a couple bucks in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah, that is nice. That is nice. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. hundred percent. But Hey, one day. 
one day. Yeah, one day. One day yeah, soon. We'll, we'll be, it'll be great. They'll be like, oh, remember when he did that small podcast back in the day? Wrong oh, side. Come on. Like, come on. Yeah, so, have a million followers and a million bucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, talking about the music side, talking about your experience now in Nashville and stuff like that, mm-hmm. what's been like – your best experience obviously we know it's a grind we know it's tough it's tough to get that first gig at a bar or tough to get opening for someone else what's been the most like gratifying experience you've had so far in this journey it's not the easiest grind what's been the thing where you're like i love doing this it could have been signing up you know one of our yeah. friends that came on a few episodes ago said he had about twenty thousand followers he was doing a small show in like orange county Uh And this one kid came, he was like 13 years old and his family came with him. And he said, like, he stayed after he was like, I'm your biggest fan. I've been listening to you for years. And he's not that big. He's not Taylor Swift. He's not the killers. And that was one moment where he was like, you know what? Like, fuck everybody else. I'm doing the right thing. I love doing this. This is who I'm doing it for really. So what has been a moment like that? It could have been something like that or something else, but what's been your most like gratifying moment? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like I have to say a couple things because, like, not only is all of this so brand new to me, like, every day is something I learn something new. Like, I just, like, dude, I was a hockey player like last year. Like, I, like I don't know what any of this shit is, but um, I mean, I think number one, like, of course, having people that are like, I'm a fan of what you're doing is like the coolest thing ever. Like no matter if it's one or five or fuck, you know, my friends have thousands and whatever, that's cool too. But like, just like having somebody that's like, Hey, I like what you're doing. That's awesome. Like I had this little family in Texas. I was playing a show opening for Briscoe. Shout out Briscoe. Um, and like these people are like, yeah, we drove from Corsicana, which is like four and a half hours away. And I was just like, wow. are you serious right now? But, um, and then some people like flew from like California for a show one time. And I was just like, God damn. All right. Thank you. They ended up being kind of weird, but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, anyway, shout out to them though. Um, sorry, brother. Anyway, um, they, yeah, dude. So that. But also, like, I would just, like, I have to mention just, like, I think the coolest thing for me right now and, like, still learning and still growing and, like, just at the ground level of this whole thing is, like, the community of people that I have been able to, like, surround myself with. And I think you can really tie that into, like, maybe another tool from, like, hockey or even the my finance mindset when I was in school is, like, networking. Dude. That is all this yeah. shit is, is you just need to like know people. And like, it has to be genuine, of course, but like, you know, meeting people and like just being a good person, like, and other people get, being good people and just like having friends around here. I mean, dude, like I'm living with this kid, Evan Honer. I'm this kid, Y Flores right up the street from me. There's just all, all these incredible musicians um, that are just surrounding me right now and i'm just i just get to learn from all of them and that like that is literally the reason i moved here just so i could do that and um it is uh it's pretty it's pretty wild it's pretty amazing to see um and i have to shout out my manager grady smith if i he's a youth so grady smith is a uh large youtuber he is like the like the country reviewer youtuber like on you know on the platform but anyway his his network is like out of control like he knows everybody and like everybody i'm telling i'm telling everybody dude like name someone but um it, it, he found me like last year on on instagram and he was a youtuber like i said and he didn't really do any managing thing but he's like hey man like i like i believe in this like let's do something and i wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for him so like i mean Hem alone um, has has really, really helped me kind of open a lot of doors in meeting all these people. I certainly would have met, you know, met any of these guys without him. Um, but now that like just everyone is here and we're all getting better and we're all, you know, doing our, like doing our own thing on our own path is is probably the coolest thing for me right now. Like it's literally like hockey, like everyone's just like kind of, you know, getting down the road. It's, it's pretty awesome. I love it. 
as far as the management side, the business side, mm-hmm. like we all, we see it, you're on Apple music. Mm-hmm. It all sounds great. But as far as like the back end business side of it, what's been kind of your biggest surprise there, whether it's with your manager, or just all that side of things. Yeah, dude, I think the biggest surprise is just like how intricate this industry is. I mean, it really is. There's, there's so many things that go into it that I am still, like, like I said, learning. And yeah. I had no idea. Like I had no idea. There's, there's a person for every little thing that you can think of in a song or, you know, whatever it is like, um, yeah, I, I, there's not like one specific thing that's so crazy. It's just the sheer grasp of it. Like, I mean, you have a record label, which everyone kind of knows what that is. I'm pretty sure. Then mm-hmm. there's an agent that I'm pretty sure everyone knows what that is. Like they get you shows. And then you have a manager and then your manager like reaches out to people and helps you plan things and blah, 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 blah. And then you have a publisher and then a publisher is for writing and then you get paid for writing and then they get a cut of that. But I think the, the biggest, like, um, I think the biggest thing that I've had to learn and if I didn't have Grady, I would kind of be screwed is that Mm -hmm. like, you really have to be careful. Like, when you're starting, like you really have to be careful because there's a lot of people that um, <clears throat> will reach out to you when you're growing and they'll be like, Hey, sign this. And then, you know, if you didn't have somebody that you could ask questions to, you would sign, like I would have signed something probably by now, you know? And cause a lot of people will say like, I can get you money or you can have all these shows and like, and a lot, not everyone's like trying to fuck you per se, but right, like, right. you know, sometimes they don't know they're fucking you and like, they're just a nice person. You're like, Oh, that there's cool. Like, let me sign this away for the rest of my life. And you know, they don't even know what they're doing, but like, you can get fucked really, really easily. Um, and so like riding out the independent wave as long as you physically can is probably the biggest thing that i've learned um like in this whole thing i'd say so it kind of kind of back to what you had said a few minutes ago Uh the most important thing so far has been networking surrounding yourself and learning from these great people but also as we can all as we all have kind of seen the music industry real easy to get fucked over so Yeah. yeah how do you how do you try and kind of get cut the shit with people, see who's real, who's not, especially in Nashville, any of these big music towns, it's super hard to do, sure. but what is kind of some of your strategy in doing that? I feel like it's the same, even in the business world, someone could be helping you or screwing you. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Okay. So, um, I, it took me a second to figure it out and you don't always see these people in person. So it's a little bit harder. Right. That way. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you are meeting these people in person, like, Like your bullshit radar gets better as you go. Mm -hmm. But I'd say the people that are talking the most and telling you the most about what they're doing, like right off the bat, probably usually not great, you know, like not who you want to hang out with. Also, like if they're just bad vibes, like you can just immediately tell, like you're just like, I don't really want to, you know. Um, But honestly, my biggest bullshit meter has just been Grady. Like anytime, anytime someone reaches out, they're like, hey, blah, blah, blah. I just literally screenshot his under Grady 95% of the time. He's like, nah, I don't talk to him. I'm just like, all right, <laughs> like, sounds good. But, um, yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's like anything else. You can kind of tell when people are, you know, just jerking your chain a little bit and you're just like, all right, yeah. like, sounds good, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of, it. it's a big town. You, so. you mentioned, you mentioned Grady in the management and, you know, bullshit readers. I, I say to Joey all the time, we always talk about how he can, it's very, in the business world, it's very easy to pick out the bullshitter in the business world. You know, it's a little different, you know, versus in the music world, I understand people can give empty promises. People can make you sure. sign something with Grady. You mentioned that he was a big YouTuber, right? Mm-hmm. And one thing I kind of fascinated about is, I would assume then, even though he's YouTube and he knows everybody and he was doing all that, our first question is, are you his first client, like real client? And second thing, I would assume, even though his bullshit meter is pretty good, that he's kind of learning with you as well. Oh, yeah. Things as well, which has got to be interesting versus 
being with someone who's been doing this for 55 years and they're sure. now their son is in charge now. I mean, how has sure. that been? You kind of both learning, growing together. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it definitely has been like this grand exper experiment between the, between the two of us. And um, like, yeah, sure. I mean, so he, this, he's, this is as new for him as it is for me. However, you know, he's been doing this for like eight years, like, or at least in the, he's been in this circle in the music, for, yeah. for about eight yeah. years. And, um, you know, he is, um, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting, but he's been nothing but, but amazing. I mean, like, like, it's not like he's making any mistakes, let's say, you know, that somebody else wouldn't, um, it, there's none of that. It's just, it's more like, cause there's this thing that athlete brain gets tossed around a lot because like there are some musicians that are athletes. Um, <clears throat> actually one of my, my roommate, Evan, he was a college diver and it's not everybody, but there's some of them. And like, um, it's just figuring out how to work the hardest, you know, like you can be like, Oh, I'm going to write a million songs today. But like, it's like, all right, maybe write one or two songs a day and then work really hard on socials and then like on reaching out to people and blah, 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 like all that stuff. Like there's a lot of things to go into it. So I think learning how to most effectively work the hardest has been, has been like kind of our challenge and it changes every day, dude. Cause like when you're trying to put a song out, it's like, Oh, I gotta be in the studio for, you know, four or five days now. And I can only focus on that. But then I also have mm -hmm. to focus on keeping my social media afloat or, you know, doing X, Y, and Z. Um, but no, dude, I mean, Grady has been like an angel, dude. Like just, I, I would, like, I could say it again and again, I would not be here without him. I mean, it's been, I, I think, I think that word, those words you just used may have diagnosed Joey and I, I think we had that. Might yeah. Be yeah. The, 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 we were like nodding our head listening. I saw we both kind of like looked at each other. We definitely yeah. have that of athlete brain where yeah. there's days where joey and i it could be him it could be me and i'll wake up one morning i've been thinking about it all night i'm gonna text joey and i spam him with like five six different things we gotta get done yeah. oh man we gotta record we gotta edit don't forget about yeah. socials don't forget about clips and right. when we took the two-week break a couple weeks ago uh i think we started it was kind of like uh, we were trying to get cured from our athlete brain a little we tried to slow the game down a little yeah. where we tried yeah. to say okay hold on like we're trying to do all these things a million miles an hour like let's slow down let's rein it back in let's focus on an episode one at a time let's do this with some help here let's focus on this let's try to shoot for goals and the last month i'd say we've been mm -hmm. better about the goals of like let's try to get 10 new followers in the next two weeks which i know don't sound yeah. like a lot and i know that's in the grand side of things but for us, it's small yeah. goals we hit and it's small little milestones we can hit. Yeah. And now since we've come back from the break, we have a rebrand, we have a website, we have someone helping out with socials. We have people writing That's blogs cool. for us. We've started to figure out some ways that, okay, we can't probably do all of this on our own. And it's way better to have people in your corner supporting you and helping sure. you than you guys, two guys trying to take on the entire world. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a day at a time, man. That's all it is. It's literally all it is. <laughs> That's what I have to I laugh. It, yeah. You think that musician, athlete, podcaster, anything else you think of, you're like, oh, what's the secret? What's the secret to the music yeah. industry? It's like, no, work hard, work every day, figure out a way yeah. to be a little bit smarter than the next guy. Yeah. And I, I just think it's like, it's the same. It's the same. It's again. the same thing, yeah. dude. And like, you know, especially in music too. And because like social media and you're just, your whole life is on a fucking phone screen. Um, yep. Uh, it, it's kind of discouraging sometimes when you're starting and you're just like, Oh my God, like where did this person come from now? They're rich now, you know, but it's like, yeah. dude, there was like five to 10 years of work behind that. Like, I'd say 98% of the time. Sometimes, sure, there's an overnight success. Good for you. You know, made a bad. That's awesome. But, um, Hawk to a girl. There you go. Overnight sensation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is that? Like, I don't even know what the, I, I, I like barely know who that, but good for her. Exactly. Like, good for her. Like, yes. You know, like, fucking awesome. Like, um, I'm jealous, but, uh, um, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, spit on that thing. 
But uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, good for her, man. <laughs> good for Hawk to a girl. There's a clip. But no, yeah, there's there a good go. clip. Yeah, um, there. But you're absolutely right that it, it, you're, it takes the grinding, and I think a lot of people that you you said it like that. It's ninety eight percent. They've grinded for years. They've worked their ass off, but. I think kind of like, and we, we talk about it, we've talked about it in past episodes, that it's those uncomfortable conversations that you have to have, you have to be thinking about, and nobody wants to think about that. They think they're going to move to Nashville, they're going to play one open mic, and William yeah. uh, w- William Morris, or what, what's it called, WME, is going to be yeah. there, and they're going to sign you, and the next thing you know it, you're going to be opening for Luke Bryan. Like, that's just like not how yeah. life works. That's it just it. isn't. Yeah. And. I think that's good that you're like self-aware about that. You think about that because I think that's things that Joey and I have because we get discouraged. There's days where like an episode might only have 50 plays and there's days where you're like, what are we doing? Like, why are we even doing this? But then there's like this one comment or you get a new follower that nobody knows and they comment and they're like, really good episode guys, truly enjoyed that. And you're like, fuck, like that's what we're doing it for. Like that's what we're doing it for. And it makes you feel good. Like you said, the families or someone coming to see your show, like someone telling you they like that and, or people saying, Oh, I really like that you're taking on this topic. Like those are great conversations that we've had. And it does make you feel like in the grand scheme of things, this grind will be worth it in the end. Sure, dude. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, man, it's just, just figuring out how to scale. Just like, I mean, it's just like fucking business, man. It's just figuring that out. Um, and like, once you do, then there's another, (laughs) then there's another like, Oh, next challenge. Yeah. Is every time you level up, you're the smallest guy in the new group, you know? So it's just yep. like, it is what it is, you know? Um, but yeah, that's awesome. A couple more questions for you before we wrap it up here. So you mentioned you're originally from Dallas. Are you unfortunately mm-hmm. a Cowboys fan? Oh, yeah. Every day. Although I am a, fan? I, I'm an adopted Browns fan as well because my family lives in Cleveland now, so. Um, mm, that's a lot yeah, of wrong I'm side both. we love that yeah which one's more painful to which one's more painful to support dude i don't even know man probably the browns <laughs> <It's> <laughs> tough, man. at least that at least the cowboys have like a sick place around the arena you know <laughs> like the browns yeah. are just like the browns i guess <laughs> but uh so you, you spend a lot of time writing obviously the music industry is 24 7 365 but sure. but what do you do kind of kind of outside of all that like what do you do on like you got an afternoon to actually relax what do you do in your free time yeah dude golf uh play a lot of golf um i uh work out um i don't know i'm just like so frustrated that i'm not in shape and i'm like <laughs> you know and it's just like oh i'm not working out every day like or skating and working out every day and like doing all that shit um but yeah i mean just try to stay in shape is like the biggest thing because when i'm not doing that i'm just like i'm like wow i did nothing today and i'm fat like that's great (laughs) (laughs) what the fuck man but um yeah, so that's been good. Uh, I'm skateboarding a lot more. I'm picking up, like, old hobbies I used to do. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. That. Those are good, those are good ones. Those yeah. are good ones. Yeah. Um, you guys play golf? Well, I'm trying try to, to get into it. I'm trying to get into it. I'm not <laughs> good. I'm not good. Hey, fair enough. I played for a couple I'm, – I'm no good, but I try. I feel good about myself when I go out there. It's like yeah. – I mean, same thing as, like, we've been saying, like, keeping the body active helps with the mind <laughs> yeah. and everything else. So I try and do that one way or another, Absolutely. um, running around Chicago. I just moved in May. So I started running a little bit, just Look, like explore so the many city a little bit. Chicago, yeah. It's crazy. There are. Yeah. There's a ton. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's yeah. The act, the going from athlete to not at being an athlete at all. We've, I mean, we did not do it at the college level. We did it at the high school level, but yeah. still getting, staying in that mindset of like, like you said, like, fuck, I, I laid around today. I sat on my bed. I wrote yeah. and I'm fat. Like there's days where you're like, fuck, I'm a lazy piece of crap. Like there are days like that. So those, yeah. those are tough in that mindset. But yeah. uh, the one question I had, I mean, it's now July 14th. We're halfway mm. through the year. Um, mm. What's been like a personal goal for yourself this year? And mm-hmm. what's like one more goal you're trying to hit before 2024 wraps up? Yeah, I've got all my goals just like written over here. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. We love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. We're big. Yep. We're big. Write down yeah. on notepad. Hey, like, you got to write, write it down. Yeah. 
But I'd say the biggest thing for me, like realistically, is just putting more music out. I have like four or five songs out. I've got a collab with Maggie Antone. Shout out Maggie. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm working on putting an album out. So I think I've got, we're trying to put, I think 12, we'll say, songs out. Um, and I think we have maybe six of them, seven of them written right now. And I think okay. in the last couple of weeks, I've written a couple more of those. Um, and I will continue writing for the next probably month or so. Um, and then I kind of get on the road after that. Um, but yeah, getting more songs out, uh, which an album will be nice to have just a chunk of 12 plus, you know, after that. Um, and then I'm getting back into the social media grind. I've kind of been off my game for uh, like, I, I put this 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 Dylan gossip video out and then it like got a bunch of streams or on on or views or whatever the fuck. I saw that, yeah, I saw and that. And then and then I just kind of stopped. I was like, oh I'm chilling. <laughs> like it's just not even close to true. <laughs> but um anyway, so well I, I got on the road too, so I was like kind of busy and I just kind of lost sight of like, all right, if you boil everything down, you need to keep doing the social media shit. So um yeah, I'm doing that uh pretty like getting back on doing that every day um but yeah so just kind of revving that back up getting songs out playing more shows i mean um i'm about to get on the road with uh evan honer uh, in a couple months and then get back on the road with wyatt flores which i'm so pumped about um and then yeah some more things in the works right now and then you know start headlining some shows here pretty soon um but Long term, man. I mean, I just, I really want to, I really want next year to be like a good festival year. I want to play some festivals next year. I think that'll be fun. Um, get my streams juicing. That would be good. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, I just think the biggest thing is getting better. I mean, you could say all you want. Oh, I want to make all this money. I want to have all these fans. Yeah, sure. That's awesome. I do too. So does everyone else. Right. But Who doesn't? Say, Yep. Yeah, you just got to get better. Um, so just continuing to improve. And I think I am doing that, which I'm happy about, you know. Um, that's that's what it is, man. I mean, that's all it is. I will say that um, I've seen this video before. Um, mm. It's it's a few, it's a couple years old, obviously, now. But it was uh, it was with Morgan Wallen, like you said, at that festival. You want to do festivals. And it's Morgan yeah. Wallen at some random festival. And I think there's like 10 people at like – it's like he's like the – the 1 p.m., the 2 one thirty slot. Yeah. Like he's yeah. nobody's there, and you see someone like that. I know everyone has had their own issues with him, and I'm not saying all that. I'm just yeah. saying from a music side. But uh, you see someone who's done that and has worked hard, and that's where you start. And mm -hmm. the goal comes from that. And like you said, like everybody wants to get rich, everybody wants to be a millionaire, everybody wants to headline. But getting better at anything is yeah. so important, and like. I love that you're like about that. Um, mm. I know this last question, this is the last question I have. I don't know if mm. Joey has any more, but it might be stupid. I know you've only, only new to the industry, but for someone who's maybe 15, 16 or someone who's yeah. in college, that's deciding I might go finance. I want to do something else, mm -hmm. pursue a passion project. Mm -hmm. What's a piece of advice you give? I know you said earlier, like do whatever you want, do something fun. Yeah. But like, what would be your one piece of advice to someone who wants to do something in their life? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that doing something without a backup plan is admirable. However, find like, if you want to do that, like if, if you're like, I want to do this music thing, but like for me, I was lucky that I had, a, I have a degree, I have two, two degrees that I could fall back on if, if, and I'm not saying that I want to right now. But if you want to do that, if you want to be, be a musician, do start a business, whatever it is, instead of doing the traditional route or whatever the traditional route is, make sure you're good at it and make sure you're good enough to jump off that cliff. Because there are millions of people that jump off that cliff without knowing anything that they're doing. And that's fine. And sometimes you succeed. But I'm just saying, have a little bit of a focus before you do that. You know, you can get really excited with everything and be like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And that's awesome. That keep that like excitement, mm -hmm. but you know, have some focus, have a little bit of discipline, 
realize that you still have to pay bills at the end of the day. You know, you, you got to get a job. You got to, you know, you got to do some shit you don't want to do to make this shit, to make it work. And it will work eventually if you keep working. Um, so this isn't a discouraging thought by any means, but you know, there is a reality, um, to doing, to doing what you want to do. Um, but do it. I mean, fucking do it. You know, why not? Um, yeah, I mean, that would be my advice. Like just realize that it's not going to be daisies, you know, all the time, but if you're passionate about it, do it. That's what I have to say. I love it. Great piece of advice. Yeah. Brendan, thanks for a great interview. We're going to wrap it up here and Dude. send it over to our ad read and our clutch moment of the week. All righty. Thank you, Brendan. Yeah, no problem. Thanks boys. Our clutch moment of the week is sponsored by Shore Metals, serving Southern California since 1970. Big enough to serve you and small enough to know you. See Stan, he'll help you out. Michael, what's your clutch moment of the week? Clutch moment of the week uh, goes out to a Twitter account that's been working tirelessly, working hard and tirelessly since three years ago. I think I first saw this when it was first announced that we were getting the new College Football 25 game. Uh, it was 2021, February 2021. We've now made it three years since then. This account, uh, almost for the entire three years, has tweeted out. The account is called, Is EA Sports College Football Out? That's the account. They've been posting stuff, obviously, mm -hmm. about the game. But for the entire three years, every day, they've tweeted the word no. No, is it's not out. It's answering the question of the account. But uh, we're recording this on Sunday. By the time the game... Uh, comes out tomorrow on Monday, an episode on Wednesday. Uh, the game will be out. Uh, my clutch moment is going to go out to is EA Sports College Football account out Twitter account. That yes tomorrow morning or afternoon, I'm sorry, is going to do wonders. It's going to be insane. Well, everyone's excited. I don't mean to burst your bubble. Is it going to be a full yes, yes. if it's just the pre-order yes, deluxe edition? It is. Are you sure? Uh, I hope so. If if you, you if sure? we waited ten years and you're one of those people that didn't want to spend the extra thirty bucks for three days, um, maybe you're tone deaf. Maybe that. Maybe I am. So uh, maybe it, I am. It's gonna be. I, I'm predicting one of the most liked tweets in sports Twitter history tomorrow on this account. Wow. The yes. Fine. So clutch Fine, clutch like moment it. for them. I want it. How about you? Clutch moment of the week. Well, my first clutch moment. I did not spend the extra $30. So I will be playing it on, I think it's Thursday night is technically when Enjoy. The, uh, the standard edition comes out. But the clutch moment goes to my roommate, Kyle. He got the deluxe edition and we'll get it early. So I'll be playing on his PlayStation tomorrow. So it'll still be fun. But my real clutch moment of the week, uh, a little a little Seinfeld reference for, for those who know oh, ball. That's I'll be going to the Cubs versus Diamondback game this, coming, uh, this upcoming Saturday on the 20th. My mom's friend's friend is the assistant to the traveling secretary in the Diamondbacks. So we got hooked up with Diamondback seats um, in the club, like we're going to be really good seats, like 100 level um, for those. But the one caveat, like Elaine wearing the Orioles hat, I cannot wear any Cubs gear to Wrigley. So I'll have to figure out what to do with that. May have to like sneak a t-shirt in under a jacket or something along those lines. But the moms are coming out to Wrigleyville. They're very excited to go out before the game, going to drink at the game. And they want to go out after the Whoa. game too. For those of you that, yeah. Uh, for those of you that haven't been to Wrigleyville, day games are a day games in the bleachers, the best the best part of summer. Wrigleyville in the daylight, trendy rooftops, beautiful mimosas. Bring your mom; it's going to be great. Wrigleyville once the sun goes down it is a little bit of a different animal. It gets greasy out there. You start to see some things, and I'm excited to party with the moms, but I, I'm I'm not sure they're prepared for what they're in for. So it's going to be sick to go to the game, but we'll we'll have some interesting stories come next week about mom activities in Wrigleyville. And who knows, maybe you'll miss, miss meet Miss Rhode Island right across the aisle. You never know. <laughs> maybe. We, we had great seats from Moose's friend the other day and I almost kicked Tom Ricketts in the knees. Oh. He walked, we were in like the front row of the section. He walked right in front of us. And I like looked around. No one really reacted. The Cubs were on more, much more of a skid at the time. They've won like the last seven, seven out of nine, doesn't I'd count. say since then. It doesn't count. But Angels were included. It can't. Two of them were against the Angels, but still. Um, Tom Ricketts, yeah, walked right past me, so that was cool. cool. So maybe, you never know who you're going to bump into in the friendly yeah. count lines, but well, I'm excited. you're going to have your Elaine moment. EA Sports College Football Out Twitter account is going to have their moment. They're very clutch. Clutch moment of the week brought to you by Shore Metals. Now kicking it to our Outside the Lines segment. Yeah. 
Wrapping it up now with our Outside the Lines segment, obviously starting out with our favorite segment, the Tone Deaf Person of the Week. Joey, Tone Deaf, who do you got? We kind of referenced this earlier with our Trump and political discussion, but people who make politics their whole personality and just cannot talk about anything other than politics, it's painful enough as it is. As someone who I would say doesn't know ball in terms of politics, I just like try and have logical thoughts when we talk about these topics. But especially there are a few, there's always a few people in high school who make politics their whole personality. And they're really just like, for the most part, echo chambers from their parents, but especially the younger people, you haven't made your own money. You don't really understand what any of this world is. I still do not at all at 23 years old. Um, but especially like the younger people who, who just like echo with their parents or anything else. So you like live life a little bit, get some experience under your belt and then make, make an informed decision about where you're at. So I just cannot stand those people on pot, like people who are already talking about the gun control with the Trump thing or, or anything else about it. Like, I, I just cannot stand those people. I hate talking about politics enough as it is. Right. But- and the yeah. worst thing is it's like, you know, when you're at a wedding, people are talking about it or you're at the bar and people are talking about it. Like, no, I just want to drink my Jack and Coke and watch the game that's on. I know this might be a replay of yeah. the Angels game earlier today, but I still would rather watch that than talk about politics. I mean, just like, oh, yeah. give it a break. Take it out. Touch some grass. Maybe touch some grass. Mm-hmm. And the people, yeah, like you said, that make their like whole persona about it so tone deaf. They're a disaster. I, I don't know. I think that's a little much for me, but you're absolutely right. Very tone deaf yeah. people. Um, for me, tone deaf in the sports world, Derek Shelton, the Pirates manager, pulled Paul Skeens after seven no-hit innings. Uh, you'd think, okay, maybe, you know, the co- there's been a lot more combined no-hitters lately. There have been. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd think he was maybe at like 115, 120, 125 pitches, and that's why they pulled him. Uh, he was still under 100 pitches. And then after the game, when they asked him, why did you pull Paul? He said it had nothing to do with pitch count. It had to do with matchup and who was coming up, uh, which led to a reliever coming in and the first two batters getting hit off. him. So no hitter was broken up in the bottom of the eighth with no outs, first and second. Um, But Skeens, Skeens dominated and they pulled him. I... I understand from a baseball side, he's still a rookie. He's young. You don't want him to bust his arm. And, you know, the second half is going to be coming out. Also, shout out Paul Skeens starting the All-Star game on Tuesday. An Al starter on the mound. Yeah. That's going to be great mm-hmm. for value against whoever's hitting one, two, three. Um, but let the guy go. Let him start the eighth, at least. If he gives him the hit, he gives him the hit. Yeah. And um, he at LSU, he had many starts over 120 pitches. So it's not like he's never done it. He's done it in the past. Let him go out there. And people want to see that. People want to see that. Yeah. They don't want to see people being pulled. They want to see history. They want to see that kind of stuff. That's why he's starting the All-Star game, which I will say, Paul Skeens, one of the craziest year runs in a sports career. I'm, I understand people 100%. win like trophies or the, they're the MVP. I know he hasn't won much yet. But uh, he went from winning uh, the national title at the LSU. He was drafted number one overall last summer. And yeah, I get, yep. no, he wasn't the first one up because the Angels always like to bring their guys up fast and they don't do anything. But he was drafted number one overall at, for the Pirates, went to the minor leagues, found out he was dating Livy, so sh- another big block. Mm-hmm. Then W spring training comes about, gets called up in May. They have to do a little service time manipulation, like always. I understand that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dominates for the first two months, 66 innings, under two ERA, phenomenal arm he's starting the all-star game he's been rookie of the month he's highest odds to win rookie of the year and now he's starting it's the fastest someone has ever started and gotten to the rookie now they have had like nomo for the dodgers an old pitcher he was a international pitcher different though older played professionally yeah uh, different situation but incredible year for paul Skeens. but Derek shelton tone deaf i know that was not it was a little extra paul Skeens. uh flips on it but Derek Shelton's my tone deaf person of the week people want to see that and it's just ridiculous let the kid go out there and compete yeah good for the game I I don't know why baseball continues to get in its own way in terms of like fan engagement stuff like that like that'd be sick it'd be everywhere but no you take it away and and then the no hitter gets broken up literally like the next two batters so yeah so ridiculous but I'm excited to see him I don't know if it's going to be Henderson Judge Soto one two three I don't know if it's going to be Quan Henderson Judge one two three, but it's gonna be exciting. He's gonna be shooting one oh two, one oh three at the MLB All Star Game in Arlington, and it's good. Really, everything's bigger in Texas. I think it's a great spot for him to debut. And you know, as an Angels fan, 
Um, that was always the day where Mike Trout got to show he was the best player in baseball. Um, and being yep. someone on the Pirates, it's not a big market team. Uh, even though people know Paul Skeens, it's another place for him to show how great he is. So I'm very excited for that. But uh, that was my tone deaf. I know I went, again, more flips. I, I'm a Skeens fan. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry, brother. I'm a Skeens fan. Um, but uh, that's my tone deaf. Uh, but wrapping up, wrong side, right side. Who, what do you got? I'll start with my wrong side because I know okay. we're going to do a combined right side for the both of us on the way Correct. out. Wrong side, if you haven't checked out the website and the blogs yet, great article by Anthony Gambino talking about, is Joel Embiid the most hated basketball player of all time? Is he a free throw merchant? No. Is he a dirty player? Sometimes. People, the latest, people have been shitting on him as uh, he was born in Africa for Cameroon. representing the United States. Yes, Cameroon. Um Shitting on him for representing the United States in the Olympic team, saying he's just ring chasing in the Olympics now because he can't get out of the first round or second round um, in the NBA playoffs. But no, there's been other other notable players, Hakeem Olajuwon and Patrick Ewing mainly, who weren't born here. They they did decide to play here and they were celebrated for it. Joel Embiid, people really just like to, to kick him while he's down. Uh, the article Gambino wrote talks about what he has gone through to get to where he is. He's been a citizen now for a couple of years, but left his family to go pursue basketball in the United States, had a ton of injury problems at the beginning of his career, lost his brother in a tragic car accident. Like the guy's been through some stuff. So like, yeah, he's, he's great for headlines and still one of the best players in the league, but wrong side, people still hating on Joel Embiid. My, my Joel Embiid takes, I, I have two. Uh, I will say one, uh, that was a brutal look when he did get fouled in the game against Canada yeah. and he got to the free throw line and LeBron went up to shoot a free throw and it was like born Akron, Ohio. And uh, Steph was, had his born Akron, Ohio. And then you see him at the free throw line and it says Cameroon. So that's a tough look. That's my first take. Yeah. Uh, my yep. second take mm -hmm. is it seems to me the way you're talking about Joel, uh, you've made it your mind. You've made up your mind to say that Joel Embiid to you is what Dak Prescott is to me. And here, let me, I'll, I'll spin you my take. They're the same person in my eyes. Okay. Same person. Yeah, maybe a little taller. If Dak wins the MVP, it would have been identical players. But here, here's my situation. Both can't get out of the second round. Uh, you tried justifying every little thing for him. You know, his brother died in a car accident. He's worked hard. He's a citizen. He's listening. Guess what? Dak lost his mom. Dak lost his brother to suicide. Dak's done this. Dak is, was a fourth round pick. He wasn't in the top. 10 picks you know Dak has worked his ass off Dak got a contract Dak still deserves the next contract they're the same person everybody hates on him I don't know why the Sixers get the same amount of hate as the Cowboys Bino made a good point uh in the past how the Cowboys have had the hate in the past they've been the winners everybody hates when people three peat that yep. kind of stuff so it makes sense in the past but uh, he likes to say that the Sixers, when they were getting that hate was so long ago that nobody on social media was a part of that hate yeah. so yeah, I think they're the same player, and I think we're justifying Dak and Joel as the same exact player. It's very wrong side. I believe that Joel is a great, phenomenal player. Um, I think that everybody wants them to play Jokic. That's going to be a crazy game because it's like one thing for your team, yep. but when a whole country is around you, like there's a lot of people in America that are probably Jokic fans over Embiid, but now they've got to switch their mindset <laughs> to show it. So mm -hmm. it'll be exciting. But yeah, Embiid, he, he gets his a fair share of deserved heat. It is not, he, he does not deserve it. I'm sorry. He gets his fair share of deserved hit, but quite, kind of wild to see, especially on the Olympic stage. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't helpful for the look that he fouled out in 12 minutes, only 5,000 FIBA, but he was just kind of like throwing people. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Like, it was really bad. The size to beat. It was, it was a brutal look, but maybe the, tone deaf though. Did you see that, that one play yeah. where he like swatted the ball to like rebound and he like hit someone in the face and they're like, how could he do that? He's always trying to. Yeah. Was it me? Am I tone deaf yeah, or was that, that a was regular dumb. basketball play? No. Regular okay. basketball play. Okay, it wasn't me. Okay. Maybe a foul. Yeah, maybe, I may, maybe it was called as a foul. But yeah, like, okay. I, I saw a, that like, and there were like people up in arms uh, were just ridiculous. So that I thought it was maybe me, but I was like, yeah. this looks like a regular basketball play to me. But okay. Yeah, very deserving wrong side, I think. Um, for me, I, I can't state this enough how excited I am for this video game tomorrow. I have been talking about it for months. You guys have heard me talk about it for months. We had Matt Brown on a few months ago. If you haven't heard that episode, go hear that. Um, I'm super excited. The game's been pre-downloaded already. It's ready to go. Uh, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Pacific time, it's ready to play. And uh, out of the blue on Friday afternoon, my team goes, do you guys want to go into the office on Monday instead of Tuesday this week? Um, 
obviously I was not the first one to respond. I wanted to see what everybody else said. And they were like, yeah, we should. Uh, the quarter filing is coming up. We should go in. Um, I, I did respond in the group chat. Sounds good. I'll be there. Uh, I I've been pretty, heart- no, I've been pretty heartbroken about it. Um, I heard, I actually heard you're waiting on results of a COVID I am. test. For yes, tomorrow yes, yes. It, I, I'm just, I care about COVID so much. I don't want to get anybody sick. So I am waiting on my results. Yes. Um, but yeah, a team decided to go into the office. Uh, I'm pissed. I like, I've already been seeing a lot of streamers the last weekend, uh, posting everything. So I know a lot more about the game. And the fact that I might not get home till 7.30, 8 o'clock my time, which means it's going to be about 10 o'clock your time. We might not get a game in or I won't be able to play with people for long. Um, my mom, I told her when she, we were talking about like things to do this week, I was like, yeah, we got softball on Wednesday. That stupid hour I have to play softball, which I love softball, but I have to go step out of my house to play the game. <laughs> uh, I told my mom for dinner this week, I want only smoothies, something that I don't have to hold. I can just like drink so for I don't sure. have to waste time. Um, there was maybe, <laughs> an, I, they brought up the idea of maybe investing in some diapers for this week. Um, but Ooh. yeah, some adult diapers, but yeah, I- incredibly wrong side that I'm going into the office tomorrow on Monday and, uh, Nobody, please spoil me anything. I, I just want to play myself and lock in. I, I'm so excited, but so sad about tomorrow. Limited amounts of grass will be touched by Michael. Oh, Schultz yeah. Week, yeah. Limited. I, I got to figure out, like, especially now, like, I've been so good about if I don't work out before work, which I usually do. If I don't do that, I'll work out when I'm working from home. I'll work out during my lunch break. Yeah, that I'm yeah. going to have to get myself to wake up before work and make sure so I can play during lunch break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's a bad wrong side, but that's mine coming up. What, right side? Do you want to tell her both? Yeah. Before that, um, also some great content will be coming out soon about the Wrong Side Dynasty. We're yes. going to have a PlayStation one. Michael and I are in that one. Moose is leading the charge on the Xbox one. A bunch of our other college friends and and outsiders as well. So we're going to have some great content, maybe some streaming games. If anyone's interesting in, interested in streaming a head-to-head game, reach out. Let us know. Uh, plenty of ways to get in contact with us through the link tree and the website. So very excited for more content coming out about that. But our combined right side, you, you take you take us out on this one, Michael. Um, yeah, I think we've talked about it basically throughout the episode. We introed with it. We talked about it a little in the interview with Brendan. Um, but just the success and support, um, it's tough to be successful at things if you don't want to work at it. And as you heard in the interview, and as I mentioned, the athlete brain is real where you're trying to do a million things. And I will say a right side for us is getting support from our friends that want to help Moose, Bino, Stein, Moops, uh, even my younger brother, Jake, who's helping write articles now, uh, getting the website up and going is very helpful for us. Uh, the support you guys have given us, following us, sticking through it all, I think is great. And, and it just makes us feel like we're doing something. Um, we talk about how this is a place to break us away from the cubicle. And yeah, it's kind of work. And yeah, we're not getting paid yet. But it's something we enjoy. And for me, it's great that the website is getting views. I love people reading the blogs. I heard a lot of feedback from my top 10 rankings of airport people, which I really appreciated because that is one of my passion projects and my manifestos. Um, So I did appreciate that. But we do, we are very thankful and you guys are great. And it was great to get everything up and going this week. And the reels are being posted now that we're successful on. And we're one follower away at this moment in time at one o'clock on Sunday, July 14th, my, my time. So at that point in time, we're going to hopefully by the time this episode comes out, we're at 200. Maybe we were at 200 already. And I haven't checked Instagram since we've started recording, but we do appreciate that. And it's just been good to see. I think Joey and I hit a lull a couple months back or about a month back and we felt like it wasn't going well. And uh, now it's kind of picking up a little better than we like. And we do appreciate it. It's made us just feel a lot better about the whole process. And we're glad that now we have more wrong siders and had have joined our community and getting email about our blog posts. It's just very cool to see, I think. Yeah. It's amazing. If anyone else is interested getting involved, social media, anything else, we are, we are expanding quickly at this point. We, we love what we got. Like we said, we got that pack mentality going on. We're all excited to work on it. And it, it's just great to see. It makes it makes me very happy. So can't thank the listeners, our, our new co-workers. Can't thank everyone enough for their continued support and following. Uh, another great episode, Michael. Stay blessed. Mm-hmm.